Hey, Guy. Hey, Mary Lou. <laughs> so, we were the 70s kids, weren't we? We sure you were. and I started in 1970. What do you think when Holy you look back smoke. at this show from 1976? Well, what do I think about? <laughs> I think about 1976 when we took a very memorable trip together. We That's did. what I think to about. We went to, went to Europe, went all over Europe. We had a great time. I, I love this uh, show. I love Johnny Mercer's lyrics. I always thought he was one of the most clever lyricists that I ever wrote, you know, writing things from Moon River to I'm an old cow hand to things like Jeepers Creepers and, uh, and then uh, Charade. He was just, he was a great lyricist. and. I've always admired his work, so I enjoy, enjoyed this show. Well, the last time we got together, we talked all about your career in show business. But uh, now you're in politics. How did you get from the Lawrence Welk Show to the world of politics? Yikes. Well, let's see. How did I do that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I moved back to Mississippi about a year after my old friend Trent Lott had gotten elected to the United States Senate. Uh, he'd been in House of Representatives for 16 years, eight terms before that. And I'd always participated in his uh, campaigns, you know, from the time he was elected in 1972. Um, so I was back in Mississippi, and, he, and he'd been trying to run his state offices out of Washington. And he needed somebody on the ground in Mississippi to do it. It just wasn't working. So he just out of the blue called me one day and said, Hey, I, I need somebody down there to, to uh, supervise uh, my state offices. So would you be interested? And I said, good heavens, Trent, I don't know anything about politics. I said, I've been in show business for 20 years. He just looked at me and smiled and said, you'll do fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know really what he meant by that. I think he insinuated there was a lot of uh, similarities between <laughs> politics and show business. You think? <laughs> I'm here to tell you. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of similarity. It's a... Uh, I found out politics a lot more work for a lot less money. <laughs> so what exactly does running a state office entail? Well, you know, that's a, that's a real good question, as they say. Um, most people think congressional offices uh, are campaign offices. They think mm -hmm. people, that's, that's where they do their political campaign. Well, not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's uh, illegal to uh, do campaign operations out of an office that's paid for by you, the taxpayer. So anyhow, each member of Congress, they have their office in Washington, and then they have offices in their districts in the state. Uh, with the senators, they have to cover the whole state. Um, so we've got uh, four offices in Mississippi. Uh, we did have five, we closed one. But um, in the state offices, uh, we do what is called constituent service work. Whereas in the Washington office, they deal mainly with legislation. Um, now, constituent service work could be is mainly helping people try to get through this unbelievable uh, bureaucracy that uh, we've uh, built over the years and uh, uh, through the red tape of uh, working with federal agencies like the Social Security Administration, Veterans Administration, Internal Revenue, things like that. That's, that's basically what we do is uh, our staff tries to help people that just are, can't get anywhere. They've hit, run into a brick wall. We're supposed to only deal with the uh, federal agencies. Of course, Trent's motto has always been, if anybody calls this office for anything, you try to help them. So we do. And on top of uh, that, I, I supervise the uh, state offices and uh, try to keep us all on the same page with the Washington office. And, uh, and I spend a lot of my time going around the state representing Trent at uh, events that he can't attend. and. Uh, and sitting in on meetings and letting him know what's even happening. He couldn't have a better representative. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, it's been a it's been a, a real good experience for me. I really enjoyed it. You have a wonderful family. I what's do. happening with them? I have, a, uh, you know, I don't know how God blessed me so this late in life uh, to have met uh, my wife, sis. That sounds funny, doesn't it? It sounds beautiful. Here's my wife, Sis. <laughs> her name is actually Sarah, but no people have called her Sis all her life. But uh, she's, uh, she's a registered nurse, and my friends kid me. They say, well, in your old age, I'd go find your own personal <laughs> nurse. Uh, but she is a, a wonderful person, and she is a, she's a quite a, a talented gal. She's, uh, she's been in administration in... Uh, uh, surgical services for, I don't know, 30, 35 years. 
and uh, which is a very stressful job, as you can imagine, running yes. operating rooms and everything uh, that goes with them. But a couple of years ago, she was about, uh, she felt like she just needed to change. She'd done it too long and she was uh, kind of stressed out. So she just moved over to working uh, at the cancer center, the Hederman Cancer Center. She's a director of program development at the Hederman Cancer Center at Baptist Hospital in Jackson. And she works with cancer patients and their families and helps them uh, when they're diagnosed. She, uh, she, she gives a class, tells them what to expect. She just kind of guides them through the uh, treatment process. And uh, you can imagine she's wonderful at it. And uh, now people come up to me all the time and say, uh, your wife's an angel. I say, yeah, I know it. And we have beautiful grandchildren. Sis has got a uh, daughter, Dawn, has three beautiful children. Uh, Blair, who's uh, 14, and Mary Margaret, who's six, and Tori, who's three. Uh, we don't get to see enough of them, but uh, and then we have uh, assist the son Hunter, who uh, works in Washington, and my daughter Julie in Phoenix, who've yet to get married. So we're going to be looking at grandkids. You're going to be busy for a while. <laughs> we're going to be uh, going to see grandkids in wheelchairs if we don't get going here. <laughs> well, you've got a brand new CD out. I, you know, I did. I finally, I've people have been asking me for years to record a patriotic CD. A lot of the songs that uh, I. Uh, saying like God Bless the USA and uh, the song I sang at the presidential inauguration in 05, Let the Eagle Soar. I finally got that thing recorded last year. Oh, fabulous. And uh, it's done really well, and I, I'm proud of it. It came out really better than I expected, let's put it that way. Still, still most of the notes come out of this croaky old voice, and uh, I thank God for that. Never a croaky old voice. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Welk story? A favorite Welk story. Well, heavens above, I'm sure there's so many of them we've talked about. We need to just sit around sometime and tell Lawrence Welk stories. My favorite uh, Lawrence Welk, uh, th this is personal for me and for Rolno. Back when we were working those four days a week and we'd go catch an airplane on Thursday night after recording and go somewhere and do a public appearance Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then fly back and uh, to the studio to do the TV show. We had done that for two or three years, and we were tired. And we were on one of those one-nighter things we'd go on, uh, oh, yeah. those three weeks of one-nighters. And, and uh, uh, Lawrence looked at us one day, and I guess he could see we were really worn out. And he came up and got whoever was sitting in the seat on the airplane next to Roland, let him sit there, and he talked to us. And he said, kids, you look a little tired. And we said, yes, Mr. Welch, we said, we're, we're, <laughs> we're uh, running all over the country working on weekends. And, uh, and uh, well, anyhow, to make a long story short, he said, well, here's my suggestion to you. Work less and ask for more money. <laughs> 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 and we did. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> So, uh, I've always thought uh, that the man was wise. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> and thank you, Guy. This has been such a great time with you. Thank you, Mary Lou. It's always good to be with you.